Hey everybody, it's that 1930s guy here. And you, right now, are looking at the Shinnecock Canal on the South Fork of Long Island. Looking south toward the Shinnecock Bay. Over here is Peconic Bay to the north. And I'm here today because we are going to have a lesson in both geography and history and geographic history on Long Island. Now Long Island is a very interesting uh, geological history. Uh, in case you didn't know, it was formed uh, yeah, two moraines from the retreat of glaciers about uh, 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. You see what happened is this where Long Island is was the maximum extent during one of these very cold periods in Earth's history in recent times, well, geologically speaking, recent times, was uh, these glaciers that came all the way from Canada stopped here. And when they stopped, they dropped all this Earth and all the accumulated stuff that they pushed on the way down just is, was dropped into the ocean. and created a long line of island and this happened twice and that is why you have two forks and the two forks stretch down into sets of hills that go through Long Island and going easterly they there's a series of islands leading all the way to Cape Cod from the same uh, glacier that went down but being a very uh, young geologically not a natural rock formation Long Island is a susceptible to forces of nature that change the way it looks more than a lot of other places and today we're gonna go through some things that happened two of them in the 1930s that changed Long Island geography and this we're gonna go to Fire Island and the other barrier islands that are to the south, which protect uh, the south shore of, of Long Island. Uh, usually there's different bays between this barrier island and the regular Long Island. But they're very, uh, like I said, susceptible to change. When storms come, they often changes the very geography. And we're gonna, there was two storms, one in 1931, 1938, that created two massive changes. And we're going to kind of go through time and show how this, these two storms and a couple other ones, uh, not in the 1930s, changed Long Island's shape. And it was pretty drastic because these changes happened very few and far between, you know, over hundreds year gaps. And uh, it just happened to be that two of these major changes happened in the same decade. And since it's the 1930s, and I'm that 30s guy, we're going to go over that today. Well, here we are, folks. Mauritius Inlet. This inlet was created by a wicked nor'easter that hit Long Island the night of March 7th, Saturday, March 7th, 1931, and ravaged throughout the day, March 8th, 1931. It was one of the worst nor'easters to ever hit. It uh, killed seven people. It created this inlet, and it actually ended a drought. 1930 was a drought year for the uh, northeast and the, the eastern half of the Midwest. It was one of the driest years ever. And this nor'easter dumped so much, so many inches of rain, it, it actually brought lake levels back to normal. Well, that was one of the good things. And this was a good thing for fishermen. Because before this, there was no inlet connecting the inland bays and the Great South Bay to the ocean until you got all the way to what is now Robert Moses Beach, the Fire Island Inlet. And that inlet was created in 1683. And since that creation of that inlet, there was no inlets created until this nor'easter hit in 1931, creating this inlet you're looking at right now. And so this saved 
farmers, farm fishermen, I mean, around this area, this saved them a 40 mile trip they would have to make to get out into the ocean. So it was a big boon. And you can see today there's still boats using it everywhere. And a uh, bit of sea fog here, forgive that, that does happen this time of year because warm air masses come over this uh, colder ocean water and, and it creates fog. But it's not too bad. It was actually worse a little earlier. And, uh, but anyway, this nor'easter, whoo, I got my feet wet. <laughs> Part of the fun. Like I said, it, it, it ended a, uh, with the a 200 plus year drought of not creating any, any inlets. And they sealed it up with rocks here. So it wouldn't uh, go away because it does they do get filled in that's what happens is the there's a coastal drift westward and sand from the east end gets pushed constantly to the west and I mean eventually this would actually this process thousands of years would, it would get rid of uh, Long Island and gradually erode away but for now it is it, it keeps moving sand they have a major erosion problems around Montauk Point because of this and it fills inlets like, like this eventually, unless they put these rocks here. But anyway, this, I guess it was a, just a major event in Long Island history because it had been so long without an inlet being created. And they wouldn't have to wait too much longer for the next one either, which is incredible. And it's part of the, the story of the strange uh, weather that occurs heard throughout the 1930s throughout the country and everyone knows the uh, the famous dust bowl <laughs> and that was created from years and years of drought not just one year because after that 19 well the 1930 was the drought for the eastern part of the country in 1931 not 1932 they got a break but 33 34 was bad the middle of the country just had drought after drought after drought and over farming that was done during world war one when farmers could create as much food as they want and still sell it uh, they use a lot more farmland in very dry typically dry areas and it ruined the soil made it susceptible to to turn to dust when a, a next drought came which it did big time and it, around uh, Oklahoma, Eastern Colorado, it was just terrible. It was just, uh, everything just turned to sand and blew away. And uh, it, it was such a substantial event. People wondered whether uh, this was a permanent change in the climate because people had only been settled in that area since the 1880s, 1890s. And they thought maybe it was abnormally wet for a little while. And maybe this is going back to normal. And this dates back to the early 19th century when people thought the desert in the Southwest was much bigger than it actually was. Uh, they call it the Great American Desert. They thought it, it stretched uh, further eastward. So they thought, oh, maybe that's true. Maybe this is really a, a just going back to its natural desert state. But, I mean, they didn't know, but a lot of people left. And uh, of course, that was the big weather story of the 30s. But there was, I mean, here on Long Island, we had these two terrible storms, this nor'easter that hit now. And then in 1938, which is where we're going to head next, to the next inlet, there was a hurricane of all hurricanes, a terrible hurricane of, of 1938, the worst to ever hit Long Island, as far as uh, when people have been able to record it. And we are going to check that out. This is the Shinnecock Inlet. It did not exist until a ginormous hurricane struck Long Island on September the 21st, 1938. It was probably the worst hurricane to ever strike here. 
it was either a category three or four by our standards. They didn't have those categories yet. They didn't name storms yet. It was just called the Hurricane of 1938, but it, it was terrible. It struck Long Island. Uh, the center of the storm came on around um, Fire Island where uh, Patchog is on the South Shore. And then it went over to New England and caused terrible damage there. And it actually uh, made ten different, uh, ten different locations. The ocean went over Fire Island, but this was the worst, and this was the one that stayed. This inlet here, and they eventually uh, sealed it off, as you can see with these rocks, because it was actually turned out to be somewhat beneficial to the fishermen who lived here. So as you have seen. Earlier, when I started the video, I was at the Shinnecock Canal. That was uh, started in 1884, completed in 1892. And that connected Conic Bay to Shinnecock Bay here, but there was no connection to the ocean yet. So the Shinnecock Bay, since it was so far away from the nearest inlet, which at this time that was the Fire Island Inlet, all the way by Robert Moses Beach, at some about 40 miles to the west of here. Uh, Shinnecock Bay, Shinnecock Bay was actually almost fresh water. It was just barely salt because it was so far away from any connection to the ocean. But when they opened the Shinnecock Canal, it added salinity to this. So it kind of ruined fresh, it wasn't good for really fresh water or salt water fishing because it was just lightly salted. But when this opened, this changed everything. This this turned it into salt water, and with salt water, they can the fishermen here could engage in the very uh, good trade of uh, oysters and mussels and different uh, saltwater shellfish that were very uh, valuable uh, to the New York City market. So they actually ended up keeping this. But the hurricane itself, besides this one benefit, uh, was just a disaster. I mean, I think it was 29 people died just on Long Island. Oh, just in, uh, I'm sorry, just in West Hampton. The town, the town West Hampton, 29 people died. Over 50 died on Long Island. Uh, more than half of them were right in West Hampton because that they had the what they called the front right quadrant of the storm, the worst part, the highest winds. And uh, the Fire Island, the Barrier Islands were just completely uh, devastated by the storm. It was a major, major event. But it created yet another inlet into the ocean. And now, in less than less than eight years, there was two new inlets in the ocean. Even though the last time an inlet was created was in 1683. So it went all the way from 1683 to 1931, and then again in 1938 a new one. Incredible. It was, you know, a once in a hundred year event happened twice in eight years. And this again turned it into a salt water bay. The 1931 created inlet made it more salty, but this finished it. But they liked it here because it was a connection much easier for people of uh, West Hampton and the Hamptons in general to get into the ocean. So. There was some benefits to this, besides the terrible uh, human toll this took. And now we're going to go to the last of our inlets.